Kia ora team, today we are looking at physiological responses to exercise as part of Achievement Standard 1.2 uh, at Level 1. As you begin to exercise, your body responds to meet the demands of the activity placed upon it. Responses can be divided into short-term effects, which we call acute responses, or long-term effects, which we call chronic responses. Acute effects occur as a person is performing the exercise, while chronic adaptations occur in the hours, weeks, months, or even years after a period of training. The two examples I have used in the images uh, above are a runner who is fatiguing mid-race as an example of acute responses occurring within the body, then a before and after picture of the current Mr Olympia champion Phil Heath highlighting some chronic adaptations that have occurred to his body over a long period of time. When we consider acute and chronic physiological responses to exercise, we're going to be looking at the muscular system, the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. The muscular system consists of skeletal, smooth and cardiac muscles. It permits movement of the body, maintains posture and circulates blood throughout the body. The circulatory system permits blood and lymph circulation to transport nutrients to and from the cells in the body. This is to nourish the body, help it fight diseases, stabilise body temperature and pH and to maintain homeostasis. Examples of these nutrients that may get transported are amino acids, electrolytes, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hormones and blood cells. The respiratory system is the biological system that introduces respiratory gases within the body and performs gas exchange. In humans and other mammals, the anatomical features of the respiratory system include airways, lungs and the respiratory muscles. In the next six slides, we're going to look at acute and chronic responses for each body system. I'll only be listing them in this slide, but we'll go into further detail in our next theory lesson. If there is anything particularly interesting to you, such as a response or even a word that you'd like to discuss further, make note of it and bring it up during our next question time. Acute responses in the muscular system include increases in oxygen extracted from the blood, increased muscle activation, increased temperature, and decreased energy stores. Acute responses in the cardiovascular system include blood directed away from non-essential organs to skeletal muscle, high cardiac output through increases in heart rate and stroke volume, increased blood pressure, decreased blood plasma due to sweating. Acute responses in the respiratory system include increased ventilation through increased respiratory rate and tidal volume, increased gas exchange in alveoli by more oxygen diffusing into capillaries and more carbon dioxide diffusing out. Moving on to chronic adaptations now, in the muscular system, muscles can perform greater amounts of work by extracting oxygen from the blood more efficiently increased capacity to produce and store energy. Muscles can contract with more force and through a greater range of motion. Increases in muscle fibre size, otherwise known as hypertrophy. The last item in the slide there seems to be cut off. Apologies for that. Chronic adaptations in the cardiovascular system include heart and blood vessels become more efficient at delivering oxygenated blood to working muscles, increased efficiency of removing waste products such as carbon dioxide and lactic acid from the body. Chronic adaptations in the respiratory system include improved lung mechanics allowing more air to ventilate. Lungs become more efficient at delivering oxygen to the alveolar capillaries and removing carbon dioxide from the body. So there we have acute and chronic physiological responses to exercise outlined. Remember this is just a list of them so I expect there to be plenty of questions in our next theory lesson. Hopefully together we can really break down and understand some of these responses in much more detail.